Um, let's welcome our next presenting company. Uh, I would like to introduce Joseph Daniluk, CEO of Waterblocks. Uh, Joseph, uh, thank you for being here and welcome. Are you ready to present? Yes. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you perfectly and I can see you perfectly fine. Thank you, Joseph. Very good. Thank you so much. Well, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Joe Deneluck. I'm CEO of Waterblocks. And I came today to extend to you an invitation to join us in building a global enterprise to help save lives, communities, and our environment, whatever and wherever disaster strikes. We've patented a new type of flood control barrier system that is rapidly deployable. It's a four foot box that has three doors on it. One's to automatically let the floodwaters in when they come and fill it up so that it weighs 1,750 pounds. They interlock together. And when the flood is over, you go over to open the front door, let the water out and put them back together. You now have eight feet of wall that's back into a four foot cube and you put it back in the truck and drive away. It's a replacement for sandbags. We've been fighting floods for the last 2,000 years using some form of sandbag or sand wall. Well, it's not working anymore with the climate change and the severity of storms that are taking place. We need a rapidly deployable new technology that can respond quickly and help these emergency responders protect their communities and the lives of their residents and the environment. These can be used in a number of different scenarios from construction sites and petroleum drilling sites and you name any industry, including trying to save wetlands, we have a tool that can do this. And that's the hardware side of our product uh, sales. But more importantly, what we figured out in order to make this scalable, affordable to especially small communities that can't afford the cost to have, buy this infrastructure, we wanna set up an Uber-like network we call the Disaster Support Network and go globally by just putting a little RFID chip inside the barrier we can rent these out instead of requiring a huge capital investment to create these because everywhere you look and you see plastic barriers, they're usually used for traffic control and they usually have holes in them so that forklifts can grab a hold of them and that kind of thing. Well, we did it a little differently so that the water can still be held inside. And that's part of our patented intellectual property. And we want to make a network where emergency responders, government agencies, major corporations, municipalities can all be members on the network and utilize the app that we, we've already talked to like Google Maps to create a new kind of topology program that can integrate with NOAA in order to give people an idea of where best to place their barriers when they have an impending flood coming. We have gone to the largest manufacturing show in North America called Con Expo in 2020 and launched our product. And you can see from the videos that we took there there is a tremendous interest, not just from the government agencies, but construction companies and all kinds of other people that were at this show. We have momentum. We've been fundraising on uh, crowdfunding on Start Engine. We have over 1,300 investors that have put up about $570,000 just from that offering in addition to another three, four hundred thousand dollars that we've got from FF and E, um, friends, family, and everybody else. <laughs> and so we're at a point where it's time to go from pre-revenue startup into full operations and get our marketing and our production and everything else. 
in order to make these plastic barriers that are four foot cube. I mean, you got to really, until you see one and you're standing next to it, you really can't understand how big four foot is by four foot by four foot. It's a big product. And just the tooling alone, um, we're going to need about $700,000. I need a marketing staff and I need uh, all kinds of additional support personnel to make the transition and go into sales. I've got pilot projects pending in California, Texas, Florida, and with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. I need to follow up on these. People will be buying these products by the truckload. There is 416 linear feet in the 104 barriers that are stored inside a 53-foot trailer that when rented, the, the renter agrees to store the trailer until we come back and pick it up and take it to the next place. So we have a really great program and we've got the momentum and I've got a management team with over 150 years of business experience behind us on the board. I've got 30 board advisors that include owners of all kinds of companies, professionals, attorneys. Um, when we went to the Con Expo show, I needed a staff of 20 people to man the hospitality suite we had, as well as the show on the floor. And I put out a request to my board advisors, all 32 of them. And 19 of them flew into Vegas and spent 10 days with me in Vegas manning the show and booth. And so you have, you have uh, six minutes left for questions. No problem. I'd like you to take a look at our program and the investment opportunity from a standpoint of making a social impact and helping us create a legacy for future generations so that our great, great, great grandchildren aren't still trying to fill sandbags when there's a disaster. But if we don't step in and do something and come up with this technology and bring it to market, we're going to still be filling sandbags our great, 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 great children will be doing. So I invite you to consider us. Now let me open it up for questions. Thank you. Any questions for Joseph? Oh, there must be one out there. Come on, guys and gals. I also work. Yeah, I know there were some uh, very bad flood, uh, floods in Santa Barbara a couple of years ago. Actually, a, a, a cannabis client of mine based there got affected uh, personally. I mean, all the houses there and there were many lawsuits also against the Edison, I think, uh, for something that they did that they should have done. Uh, I don't know, like, do, do you think about, you know, partnering with uh, some big company that, you know, could invest as a as a way to you know uh, not get sued <laughs> the next time there is a, a a flood situation you know like a jb or some big company you know providing this technology you know oh certainly uh -huh. it just takes it takes time claudia thank you and you bring up a really good point if i was in this in the business that you're talking about if i was growing marijuana in my backyard, I know that I cannot get flood insurance for that. And what would be really great if I could create a four foot or double stack these water blocks and create an eight foot tall wall around my 45 acres of hemp and marijuana that I'm growing in the backyard that I can't buy insurance on because then it's protected. And this is just one example of the different multiple uses of this thing. And the problem is, is for the potential investors trying to get a, especially with this pandemic, and I, we, we've been buried in delays from meetings with the political officials in California and Texas and Florida who can't get a meeting together because somebody's on quarantine or somebody's got a call with the president. I mean, three times we had conference calls with the governor of Texas and the mayor of Houston. And it, it's, 
going to big corporations and trying to get them jump on board with this, that's a 12 year, I mean, 12 month undertaking. And so we're out looking for investors. And the reason we did crowdfunding is because my whole concept, and I got a background in finance and work in the stock market back in the 80s and 90s. And I'm going to tell you that I created this company in such a way that little investors could get a 10 times return, not just the VCs with the millions of dollars. And everybody should be able to not only share in this, but take great pride in the fact that they're doing something for future generations. That's what we're all about. This thing is, it, it's a, we're making a plastic box with three doors on it. That's all we're doing. And we're creating an Uber-like network and all the technology is already out there. All I got to do is go get a white label for the software and I can turn this on. But I'm not going to do it until I'm adequately capitalized. So I'm here because you guys are here. And I love you all because you're helping Thank make you, business go. Uh, Clifford, do you have uh, one more question for Justin? Yes, uh, I would just basically two quick questions. Um, Joe, a nice presentation. Uh, thank you for thinking about uh, humanity and the planet and all of our safety. What is the composition that you're considering or that you're using at this point? I suppose that it's a petroleum-based bioplastics? Oh, yes. Let me explain. I've been making nuclear waste liners for the Department of Energy since 2006 through a rotomolded plastic process. It's a powdered resin that we put inside a steel mold, heat in the oven for anywhere from a half an hour to an hour, depending on how thick the walls are and that kind of thing. Pull the steel mold out, open it up, and there's the barrier. And that's how we make them. Okay, I'm wondering, uh, one last question, if you have ever um, toyed with the idea of using any type of um, hemp biomass uh, for your product, whether it be a um, petroleum-based, hemp-based petroleum, or a hemp biomass uh, product? If it's got the longevity, you know, our resin maker in Germany gives us a 20 year warranty on our product. In other words, if I make one of these plastic boxes, take it out and put it in the desert and let it sit there for 19 years and go out and it's got a crack in it. The chemical company, it's the largest chemical company in Europe called NTAC. And that's who we buy our nuclear waste re resins from. They now have this new product that they can give a 20 year warranty on. And if your biomass product will last 20 years sitting in the desert, I'd be glad to hear about it because I'm looking for something that might even be lighter than what we're using with polyethylene. Because right now we're at about 50 to 60 pounds for a box. And I'd like to get that down to 30 or 40. And if I can do it with something that's lighter, that still has the strength, because we've took one of these boxes and we put 3,500 pounds of steel plate on top of it to see if it would hold its structure, and it did. So it has to have a lot of strength. It has to have the, all the capacity that a polyethylene product, that's why the government uses polyethylene to bury nuclear waste in, because it lasts for 10,000 years. Thank you, Joseph. Very interesting uh, presentation.